Week 17. You can't see the ground at the moment, but this room is a little bit of a mess. I'm packing because we're about to go and do a VO2 max test. Here is a bike rack. Facebook Marketplace Steel. By steel, I mean like cheap, not I stole it. 30 bucks, brand new, still in bubble wrap. Look at this, it's all still in bubble wrap. This is gonna sound really funny, but I got tanned on my legs and it really shows from wearing tights when swimming. I was wearing these guys um, and I got like really bad lines. So I was like, oh, I'll switch to briefs because I see everyone's swimming in like briefs. Um, first time ever. When I tell you I got burnt, Let's just leave it at that. Um, but yeah, I have to swim later today after the VO2 max. Yeah, I'm gonna finish up packing because I need to put the camera away, but let's go do a VO2 max. All right, so week 17, we're down with Nick at Mets Performance. Today we're doing a VO2 max and a bit of lactate testing. Yeah, so we'll put you three paces uh, on the bike, ramp test, three minute ramp. Basically, we're gonna try and push you and try and break you a little bit at the end, but ultimately we're trying to assess your oxygen consumption throughout the test at some various intensities. Have a look at your lactate profile as well. Um, some of your other respiratory, heart rate responses, just to help you build out and refine some of your training in the next block uh, leading up to Ironman. Sweet. Uh, it's gonna be a bit of fun and massive thank you again for Sean for helping us out today because uh, Sean is always the one helping us out. Let's get into a bit of testing. Watts, good power. Fifty three point four, still coming up. We're going to put you up at three thirty. You keep going if you can. On 53.8, it's peaking here. Rest there, mate, rest there, well done. Woohoo, 11.4. I'm just gonna drop all this out. Have a few little pedals, it's gonna be a bit heavy, but it'll lighten off pretty quick. Feeling sick or dizzy at all? Huh? Feeling sick or dizzy at all, or just cooked? Just make it pinch. Yeah. Man. Yeah, he's sitting around 30 at the moment, so I go, by the end of the test, yeah, probably mid 50s is probably about right. Just depends how much top end you got. <laughs> Not a lot. Yeah. I'm yeah. gassed. Did my RAM test from eight weeks ago. I think I failed at 300 watts for a minute. Today we did 300 watts for three minutes. After a bike session yesterday, that probably wasn't, didn't help me out. I feel great. Didn't feel great like 10 minutes ago. Um, yeah, we went all right, I think. Nick's gonna tell us how we went. Not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. Not too good, not yeah, too bad. We went all right. Probably as, as expected or as best you can for, what do you say, seven, uh, 17 weeks or yeah, seven how, weeks. however long into starting to do triathlon, it's like you're doing all right. All righty, post ramp done. Um, absolutely gassed. But thanks for Nick for helping us out. Um, we're just going to chat a little bit about the data, um, how we're going with my training, if we're undershooting, overshooting. One of the key things out of the data is obviously we did a VO2 max test, so understanding where your maximal oxygen consumption is. So it comes out at 54.5 mils per kilo per minute. So it's how many milliliters of oxygen you can take in, so breathe in, transport around your, your body and then actually use in the muscle per minute. And it's relative to your body weight. So it's a bit of a power to weight ratio um, that we look at. Um, and in your case, building from nothing, it's like we want to try and get as aerobically fit as we can. So a higher VO2 max to an extent, it's going to be one of those key components. But when we then look at Ironman, it's then looking at well, what comes what we call sub-maximally. So what's below that? And then what are you going to be able to sustain for not just a short period of time, like in a test here, but what can you sustain for three, six, 10, 12, yeah. how many hours it's going to be on course, especially on the bike, you're going to be out there for most of race day is on the bike as well. So we're gonna chat a little bit about my training, how I've been going um, in the past couple of weeks. 
and obviously my FTP remained pretty similar today. We noticed that a lot of my rides, I'm averaging about 120, 125, 130 BPM at max. Um, and then my running, I'm around 148 BPM. Um, so Nick's gonna chat a little bit about if I'm overshooting it or undershooting it. Yeah, so in terms of, I guess, a lot of the use case for the data that we're looking at is refining some of your training zones to really nail down, yeah, are we, are we riding too easy, too hard? Especially in your zone one and two type stuff. That, that's gonna be where most of your volume is built, especially for Ironman. Like, you just gotta get the Ks in the legs. In terms of a zone two, predominantly, which for you is around 135 feet per minute. So already I start to look at that and go for a lot of your zone two work, probably a little bit unders in your training. We probably push a little bit harder there. Not to say that lower than 135 beats per minute on the bike isn't beneficial. You've definitely got the ability to ride a little bit harder though to get a little bit more out of it. And the part of that's gonna be the specificity aspect is like being able to produce a little bit more power in the legs for a longer period of time. You've done a lot of training already, so it's like you're probably due for a little bit of an increase to try and challenge yourself a bit more. We look for our first lactate threshold, but then also we're looking at your ventilation data, so your breathing. So what we call your ventilatory threshold as well. Those two combined give us a clear indication of where things go from really easy for you to not too bad. That's around that 150, 152 beats per minute on the bike. So we're looking at where did we get a little bit bump in lactate. In terms of where you've been currently riding, again, it's that ability to be able to push a little bit harder now in training, which yeah. is gonna give you a bit of a kick along, which is good. Yeah. It's always nice to know you can ride a little bit fast, a little bit harder too, which yeah. is always helpful. Typical scenario, about seven to 10 beats heart rate difference between bike and run in the same athlete. Very top end of zone two on the bike for you about 150. We're probably looking somewhere around high 150s, 160 beats per minute on the run. We're sort of mentioning before, there's, there's kind of no bonus points of sitting right at the top end. Yeah. Like you definitely want to accumulate a lot of your volume as kind of as low as you can. Like there's, there's no, no harm in keeping it a bit easier when you're just trying to accumulate. Yeah, it's just a little bit unders on the run, yeah. but a lot unders on the bike. Yeah, there, there's, there's something to be said about the specificity though. Yeah. Cardiovascular wise, breathing wise, cool. You can do it, blood lactate's low enough can you execute and have the durability of the legs, the muscular endurance to keep producing 150, 160 yeah. watts for two, three, four, five, yeah. six hours. Um, so that's that little specificity piece that we then start to play with in this sort of next phase of training as you get closer and closer to racing. Yeah, cool. But also lifting things up, it's naturally just gonna keep boosting things up and get you a little bit fitter as well. So yeah. does that mean in another 10 weeks time from now, could you ride a little bit higher than that again? Possibly, it's just gonna be a case of how much you adapt. Yeah. Flatten that out, you'll get the flattening of lactate too. It's like, it's these ones, that'll come down to 1.3, that's a 2.5, that's a 3.5, okay. that's a 5, 8, 11, we're at yeah. 3.30. Thank you so much to Nick for helping us out. Um, gained a lot of information and thanks to Sean, thanks to Tony, thanks to everyone helping film me in as well. <laughs> A good one to add to the series and to know that you know even though we're staying at the same ftp pushed above 300 watts yep. um in any sessions basically which is probably why we're about at the same ftp but um it's good to know that you know we've got a good baseline and plenty to still gain next block of training like we yeah. said heaps of, heaps of scope to improve which is really cool so yeah keep getting out there and getting stuck into it sure all right after a very long drive back home we've just got home just gonna go grab the bike out of the car and let's chat about the VO2 max and my results. Bike, let's put that over here. Did I expect the results? Yes, because the graphs don't lie as well. Um, but clearly we've been doing a lot of base work and no top end work. And clearly that shows. Do I think I would have got a different result running um, because of my prior experience in sport? I actually don't know what the research shows regarding that. But yeah, we did a three minute cycling ramp test and we were able to hold three minutes for 300 watts and then I was absolutely cooked. Was I surprised though? No. I gave my all, but we haven't done any top end work and that hasn't been in my program. So obviously I'm not gonna get better at top end or VO2 max stuff if it's not in my program. And I discussed with Nick, should I be doing more top end work? And the answer was yes. But yeah, I think it's in my program coming up. I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to speak to my coach about it. But yeah, as I spoke to Nick, he was super intelligent, absolute ripper of a bloke. And if you ever had the chance to head down to Mets Performance, definitely go down there. He is full of knowledge and I was asking questions for like three hours. So my Garmin predicted VO2 max is this. But as I spoke with Nick, I reckon a lot of my cycling stuff has been undershot and I could probably start working harder on my cycling aspect to try and ramp up the wattage a little bit more. 
But yeah, I'm not too disappointed, not too surprised this time, unlike last time. Um, I was able to keep my hat on during the VO2 Max as well, which I forgot about. But we, we left it on, so. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Sean, thank you to Nick, thank you to Tony. Seriously, without those guys, this video wouldn't be possible. And this weekly episode, number 17, would not have been possible. So thank you so much. And we're still in the hunt for a triathlon bike. That has been really hard to try and find, to be honest, at its peak season for that right now in Australia. Probably been my main concern the last four weeks. Um, not being able to find a bike. I, I just want to have a really comfortable ride, but Nick was a legend and he's trying to help me out with trying to find some bikes. And if you open up Training Peak straight away, you're reminded that we are 14 weeks away from the Port Macquarie Ironman. All right, so the video was actually meant to end before, so that's why I said see you next week. But I've just got back from my swim and gym, Taco Bell, and I actually just want to talk about my swimming a little bit but I have to let Boston in. <laughs> but I have to go take him for a walk now at 9 p.m. Or I'll see we'll do this for a long time. So I got to the pools pretty late and I actually finished my session when they closed. That whole swimming session, I even messaged my coach and I was like trying to find excuses to not do the distance. And I probably didn't do the session as hard as I could have, but Throughout the entire session, I was just like, I can't get this distance done. When I was swimming, I was just like, I don't want to be here. I can't be bothered doing it. And I noticed that I was very fixated on my watch and very fixated on my time. Tonight's session, I was just like, I can't do this. I can't get it done. Um, but then I just stopped looking at the clock. And I know I probably shouldn't have done that because I was meant to be looking at the time and hitting certain times. But yeah, took away the clock and just finished the session. Ended up doing my longest session ever in the pool. Pretty crazy. I mean, I had stomach problems for probably half an hour to an hour afterwards. The other thing I get after long swims is if I tilt my head forward, water comes down my nose. I find anything up over 3K, my nose will come out of the water for like a day. Basically, I was like, I didn't want to do the session um, and we got it done. So that's why I was like, I'm going to turn the camera on and I just want to talk about it a little bit. My sleep still hasn't improved. I still wake up three to four times during the night. Not entirely sure what to do about that. My sleep has honestly been really, really, really bad. I find it very hard to get to sleep. I wake up a lot and as soon as I wake up, can't get back to sleep for an hour. Not entirely sure what to do about that. Not sure if anyone has any experience with that. I do take pillow of magnesium. Um, it did help me during the first couple of weeks, first, first month or two, um, but hasn't been helping me recently. I still have it. Not sure if anyone has any tips or tricks regarding the sleep. Oh, 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 oh. Well, we butchered that, but thank you for watching week 17. Bye.